for joining us. Um, I'm going to talk about SolidWorks Apps for Kids, and the main focus and the reason behind SolidWorks Apps for Kids is really to ignite inspiration and excitement of design in kids. So in the US and in Europe, there's a lot of momentum behind this uh, thing called STEAM. And STEAM uh, looks at a few things. It looks at science, technology, engineering, maths. And all of these you can think of being like the intelligent or the, the left side of the brain, right side of the brain. Um, but what, they, what it doesn't include is one of the most important aspects, um, which is the creativity side. So STEAM is a, a project really that, that is worldwide that we are really trying to promote as DASO systems. Um, to encourage kids to not just think logically, but also creatively. Um, and Albert Einstein kind of joined those two things together um, by saying creativity is intelligence having fun. And fun is really what these apps are about, is to try and have fun whilst using them, and then also learning um, you know, about 3D design and about creativity and creation. And we want that to happen in the classroom, um, at home with parents, but also with siblings and with friends. Um, we want kids to connect with each other and share in that sort of passion for creation and having fun. So the one thing we realize very quickly that is one thing needs to be quite simple and easy to be able to use it straight away and have fun with it. So we created multiple different apps uh, that all do sort of various different things. So I'm going to take you through now just those different apps and how they work. The first one I'm going to show is what we call Capture It. This is if you want to capture inspiration or ideas that you have. Um, so for example, I'm going to show how we create a, excuse me, how we create some rockets. So with that, um, we can download or take photos and start to put a collage together of all different um, space things. We can draw pictures. So here I've got a little star that I drew, um, a little, uh, I think, alien at the bottom here that I drew. Obviously very good at drawing. Um, other things we can do is kind of crop the images and layer them. But really the idea here is just so you can create a nice collage and, and really share um, the sort of interest you have about a particular subject. Once you've decided what you want to do, we can go ahead and just start to create something. So I'm going to do it um, from a, a blank screen, and we're just going to start. Now, we know a lot of kids use uh, different tools, so uh, maybe games. Um, so Minecraft is one uh, that is very, very popular. And the thing we looked at with Minecraft is why is it so popular? And the main reason is it's so simple. So we took those sort of ideas so that to create something is just a case of just adding blobs um, or simply removing blobs. So just like Minecraft in blocks, you just add blobs and remove them. We can also start to stretch them, change them. So here I just want to add a sort of rocket booster on the back of this so I can just add some material on the end, make it a little bit sharper because the, the rocket booster is sort of flat on the end. And then just make it a little bit wider so that it looks more like a, a booster. And then we've got the sort of start of the back of that design. For this middle part, we're just going to sort of stretch it so it looks like a, the nose cone of a, of a rocket. And then we're simply just going to add in... Excuse me. We're just going to add in an extra sort of uh, rocket on the side. And that's just going to be two sort of uh, things long. And then we just simply position where we want that to go. So the main thing that we have tried to work on is just to be able to create anything, um, but in a, in a simple way. And then also to be able to modify it very quickly without really thinking about what you sort of need to or, or want to do. So in this case here... Um, I can just keep pulling it around, stretching it um, to decide how I want this shape to look. It's okay. You're okay. You can come around. <laughs> and then, for example, here I want another rocket on the top, so we can just simply copy that and then move it into the, the sort of position that I want. 
So everything is, is as easy as just simply pushing, pulling, moving things around, copying it, uh, sort of pasting it, and then we can start to, to join things together. So to finish off this, uh, this rocket, I'm just simply going to join the top there to the bottom. This side bit here to the side. And obviously this is only half a rocket, so if we want to make a, a full one, we can just simply say everything on one side, magically go over to the other side, and now we've got this sort of mirrored um, sort of shape. And what that means is that anything that I sort of do on one side is automatically going to sort of update and change. So whatever it is that you want to uh, create, whether it's a rocket here, um, some sort of fun animal, food, anything um, that either has a, a teaching sort of aspect or just a simply a fun uh, sort of component to it, um, we're able to create that inside of uh, SolidWorks Apps for Kids. Now, anything I create here, um, I can also start to style is what we call it. So I can take this rocket now and say, well, actually, a blue rocket is okay. Could you ask them what color they'd like the rocket to be? Any color. Yellow, great. So we have a, a yellow rocket, and then we'll have maybe, should we put purple on the end? So we can just simply paint uh, the rocket to be any sort of, uh, any sort of shade or color that we want. So we'll have a, a purple and then maybe a pink. So a bit on this one. And then some red sort of boosters at the back. Okay, we can do that. So also pink is uh, a color we like, so we can just use pink. Now for this one, um, what I'm going to show is we can actually paint directly on the model. So if we want some uh, pink stripes or however we want to design that, we can start to draw directly on the, on the thing. And anything that obviously we draw, we can change the color of that, we can change the size, we can change the shape of it. Um, we can also add stickers. We know that kids love stickers. Um, so for that reason, we added loads and loads of, of different stickers. Um, also, what I didn't show, just because of time in, in Capture It, you can create your own stickers. So you can draw and paint in Capture It as well as add pictures. And then you can paint things as silly, uh, well, as simple, let's say, as an Italian flag. So we can make sure this is an Italian rocket. Um, I can put a, a little alien in a window. Um, or we can add other stickers to the, uh, to the rocket to sort of finish it off. Now, where do rockets live or go? Um, they go into space. So if we want to see it in space, um, we could put it on an alien planet or under the water, um, but obviously rockets go in space, so we can just place the uh, rocket and sort of finish our picture of our 3D rocket um, flying around in space. Now, another app that we have, and this is really, a, I'd say, more of a, an educational one. One thing that we try to do is look at what kids are learning in schools so mechanisms and linkages is something that kids learn from quite an early age uh, to understand how things move. Um, so with that, we created what we call uh, Mechit, which is an app that allows you to create um, sort of linkages and basically make magic things happen so that as you turn things, things start to, to move around. You can add little motors to it so it can move automatically. You can also add uh, what we call markers. Um, these allow you to see how that movement happens, so you can start to draw uh, sort of lines of, of where that movement is occurring. Now, that's a very simple example. You can also start to have real fun with this, so we can see how, what mechanism is needed for a crab to move. So you can see how, as these crab's legs start to move sideways, so crabs can walk sideways, um, we can see what sort of mechanism is needed to create that, if you wanted to cut that out of cardboard and start to make it, this is exactly how you could do it. But also, one thing that I loved as a kid was a spirograph and being able to draw those really nice pictures. So here, just by creating some things that spin and adding different uh, marker colors to it, we can start to create wonderful sort of spirograph 
um, sort of artistic pieces. Um, and if I speed that up so it goes really fast, um, we start to see how it builds up this really nice um, sort of patterned uh, picture, which is really cool. So, so far we've gone through, we've captured something, we've created something, we'll shape it, then we've started to paint it and style it. But how do I hold something? How do I have it in the real life? If I want to create something and give it to, so if I was a kid, maybe I'd give it to my mum. Um, I could still give it to my mum now. Uh, she'd be quite happy with a rocket in space. Um, what we can do is actually print that. So if I go back to my rocket, and from here, we can go to uh, print it. Now, we know that not every house or family has a 3D printer, or not every school has a 3D printer, so we want to make sure that it's accessible. And you can not just 3D print things, but you can also just 2D print them. So you can just create, position your rocket how you want it to look um, in 3D, and then just simply print that on a 2D printer, send it as a card or, or something like that. We also have uh, some fun activities like print by color. So if you know print by or color by numbers or paint by numbers, what this does is it looks at the original colors of the model and allows you to create this black and white drawing with numbers. And if you see when I change the position, the numbers will all update so that you always have a correct set of numbers to start doing your, uh, your coloring. Also, uh, we have this thing called cube print. Now, for anyone who's an engineer, so the adult, you might know about two, uh, 2D drawings and also graphic projected draw, uh, pictures of the, the design that you're creating. That's exactly what this is. Because if you fold up this cube, if you cut it out of card and fold it up, you actually create a cube with the views of what that model will look like from each of the sides. So it's like a real simple way, an easy way of creating a 3D object um, but obviously with 2D paper. But as I said, we also can 3D print things. So we automatically get um, the file that you need for any 3D printer. And you can just download that as what we call an STL, which will be opened in any 3D printer, um, pretty much any 3D printer in the world. Uh, but we've also partnered with uh, one of our sort of educational partners, Sindo, who's a 3D printing company. And what we can do from there is actually directly send the the file that we've got here, to the printer over the internet. So actually, the printer that I'm talking to is in America. It's in Boston. And I can just send that file now. It's shown me how it will print. This is all the things that it needs to print. I don't need to worry about that. I just click send, and then the file will go across the world um, and start printing on a printer in our office in, in Boston. Just kind of nice, kind of cool. So the one last thing I wanted to show, and I don't know whether I've got enough time. Hopefully, I have yes, um, is how we allow kids to share and, and do things. So I can see this planet here. So this is something that um, somebody shared to the public gallery. That means anyone can see it. And I can copy that and make it my own. So I can take that and now I've got this planet and it's my version. And anything I do to that now is going to allow me to share that back. So I've copied it. I can go and add any shapes to it, so the rocket I created, I could add it in there. I could maybe move it around if we want it to be somewhere like there above the thing. Also, because we're in Italy, I thought, you know, let's add a flag onto the planet. So we can just position the flag on the planet because uh, we've conquered that planet in Italy. And then we can go to style it. And then we can make sure everything looks how we want it and all the colors if we want to change them. So let's just maybe get it exactly how we want it to look. We'll put a space scene in there again. So now we've got from one planet that somebody else created, I've added in a rocket, I've added in the flag. Um, I can now share that again back to the gallery to create my little scene. And what will happen is that the, the, the kid who created it originally will always get the credit for that original creation. So the, that's the original one, this is my one, and what we're able to do is see how kids' models change when other kids start to interact with them and play with them and then create new things from them. So we create this sort of chain and kids now can see, they can like, um, and they can share their different uh, creations and then modify other people's creations as well. 
So just to finish, um, we've done lots of testing over the last few years with uh, SolidWorks apps for kids and had some really great feedback. We've had it at our, our company and we've gone to schools with it. Um, but generally we're finding that, that kids are really having fun and loving sort of learning about design. One last thing I wanted to talk about is um, I found this quote because it really, the example I'm about to show, this really uh, made me think about it. But if you tell somebody, they'll probably forget. If you try and teach them, they may remember. But if you involve them, they will learn and they will remember that. Um, this is one of my colleagues. Um, they had a, a radiator, so where the heat comes from in your house, and they removed it. So there was a hole in the floor. And this was in her kid's bedroom. And a kid thought that if there was a hole in the floor, ghosts might come through there or, or things might come through, and he didn't like it. So she worked with him and involved him, and they created this little monster that would then scare away and stop any of the bad things coming into his room through the hole. So it was just a really, I think it was a, a great thing that um, our colleague uh, Chin Lu did um, with her son, using Shape It, using Print It, um, and then style it, as you can see, across the top to create the, uh, the different colors of the monster um, to then make her, her son like, sleep safely and happily at night. Um, also, this is a diorama like, used in many schools. Uh, we're starting to look at providing solutions to schools and classrooms. Um, so we have curriculum as well that adds to this. So if there's teachers out there, then you can use this app or these apps um, to actually teach concepts of design um, engineering and when I talked about STEM originally this is something I think we really need to change so if we want things to change then we have to be part of that change so um, yeah so apps for kids is available now um, if you just use your camera you can get this um, from your phone or if uh, you just go to the website on there um, again free to use completely free uh, go sign up try the apps send us feedback and that's it. Thank you. Thanks.